Welcome back. Well, we have Tom McRae here, who is here on behalf of our golf operations. How are you? It's so nice to see you. Very good, Lisa. Very. It's always great to be here. Well, Just excellent. Excellent. So, you know, you and I talk many times about golf and what's happening and all the different things. And, and now, as we were talking off camera, you have so many more people that really are residing here during this time of year. So with that said, what are, what are some things that you are experiencing with, with golf reservations and people just wanting to play golf? Well, what we've seen is, uh, you know, before the, the snow started to fall in the north, primarily Canada, Minnesota, and places like that, mm -hmm. is we had a little over 2,700 registered golfers. You know, we took everybody in the community, we got them into the system. When we got them registered, we listed them a certain way so we know who the golfers are in the community. Mm -hmm. And now, once the snow started to fall, we're up almost 500 golfers. <gasps> wow. And that is a, that's a big number. Yeah. And what we're finding, and I think, you know, the, my primary focus today is to let people know what's going on. Okay. It's difficult to get tee times. Mm -hmm. It's extremely difficult to get tee times. The, the new online system is working quite well for the most part. Mm -hmm. But the problem simply is that in two or three seconds every, every, every day, all the tee times for the next week are gone. So what time do you open them up? At 6 a.m. Okay. What we found was, the reason that we do it that early in the morning, what we found was is when we were doing call-ins during a, when we couldn't do the, the in-person lottery anymore, that everybody plays on the same day at the same time. <laughs> so we actually had pace of play affected by people out on the golf course with their cell phones on their ears trying to get tee times for the next week. So, okay, well, at 6 o'clock in the morning, they get up, they, they can take care of their tea times, they can have their breakfast and coffee and get to the golf course and play golf. Okay. So that, that part of it is, seems to be working quite well, but the issue simply is that there's probably 30% more people looking for tea times than we have. Yeah, it's quite a bit more. But what's so interesting to me is that you didn't experience this last year? Well, maybe not because of COVID. <coughs> COVID, I mean, the, the issue really is like, uh, COVID is not as restrictive as it was back then, mm -hmm. but it's still, people have retrained that this is something that they can do without restriction. This is, they haven't had to wear masks for a long mm -hmm. time on the golf course. This is something that they could do and people are playing golf. Okay. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty incredible. And it's that way all across the industry. You know, like my wife and I were looking for a place to play in Palm Springs last weekend. And it was really difficult oh. at, any, at any rate, at any price. Wow. So it's, it's not just us, it's everywhere. And well, and it could just be a temporary thing, maybe for a little while, because people are dying to get out and they want to go to do something fun. And that is a great place to do it because it's outside. And, and a lot, maybe there's a lot more people playing golf, too, these days. Uh, just across, again, across the industry, that, that's the only industry that I think is just booming. It's, <laughs> uh, it's like the, 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 there's nobody going to movies anymore because I don't even... Like the Academy Awards are coming up. Like, what movies are nominated? Where there are actually movies had? Right. You know, so people are people are doing things that they can do. Well, you know, now baseball season's been delayed, uh, so I we're know. not going to we're not going to have that percentage going to a ball game in the afternoon. Well, that's a really good point. So there isn't a whole lot of competition for golf at this point. So um, now your software, like you you said that your software is working just fine. Is there some other things you might be able to tweak? Well, the issue really is the software is working well for the most part. And I think the challenges that we've tried to instill in people to, to, to do a little bit better uh, to help us and to help your fellow residents get tea times, okay. you know, it's starting to get a lot better, but the, the issue is there's some, some fixes that have to happen. Okay. You know, because some people are still able to manipulate the system to double book tea times. Oh. And that's something that is a real no-no. Obviously, you know, at 6 a.m., if people are booking multiple tea times for the same group, that mm. means the other people that are trying to book can't book tea times. Right. So just so people know, if for some reason they see a tea time that they booked canceled very quickly by, by staff, that's the reason why. I see. And we don't feel like it's something that we're going to explain to anybody. If mm -hmm. we have to, if, if you're double booked a tea time, we are going to cancel the one that we feel should be canceled. Okay. And okay. those will be opened up and those can be booked by other people. Um, can you just name a couple things that people can do to help with this problem? Uh, well, the things that people can do, like it's... The system works quite well, and double booking tea times is the reason that people can't get tea I times. See. But when they're checking in to help the customer service, because obviously, you know, even as busy as we are, you know, we really try to, to make it nice. We really try to make it a service level mm -hmm. that uh, you would expect in a, in a place like the village. Mm -hmm. And what happens invariably is people are booking tea times and then getting together with their friends, and different people are showing up to the tea. 
to check in. Oh. Well, sometimes there's too many, sometimes they're just different mm -hmm. people, but they have to just imagine what the starters are going through. You know, where, mm -hmm. on Monday, we, we put out 460 rounds of golf mm -hmm. during the course of the day. So that's 460 transactions just related to checking people in to get them on the golf course. Right. We have three different nines that are teeing off in, in different sequences. You know, it's a puzzle that we manage well, but if somebody comes up to the counter, and tries to check in for golf, they give us their name and they're nowhere on the tee sheet and they don't know who they're playing with, Oh. then it becomes this, this right. mystery that we have to solve. Okay. So. And, and so what we're asking people to do is when they, when they book their tee time, to book it for the people that are going to play that day. If they can book it for those people and those are the people that actually show up, mm -hmm. somebody gets sick, has a doctor's appointment, can't play, and they change it to somebody else, call a golf shop and have that person's name be put in place okay. of that person. Perfect. And Perfect. then at that, at that time when they're checking in, then the service levels can be great. Okay. And we know who's playing with who. Okay. And we won't be charging the wrong people. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, a lot of communication needs to happen amongst those groups to make sure that, number one, they all know what time they're supposed to be there, and number two, who they're actually playing with. So um, obviously, you are doing a great job. This is the first time that we've talked to you this year. And so we appreciate you coming on. And sure. uh, we'll have you back again, and maybe we'll talk some tips. Anytime. <laughs> well, All right. All right. Take care. Thank you. If you guys need more information about how to handle your tea times, you can always get in touch with the golf shop and they will be able to walk you through on what you need to do. We'll be right back.